In today's video, I'm going to give you an extremely detailed overview of the most commonly asked questions in healthcare assistant interviews, and I'm going to help you plan really good answers to the questions that are most likely to come up. So let's start by looking at what you will actually learn by watching this video. So firstly, you're going to see the most common healthcare assistant interview questions so that when you go to your interview, you're going to know what questions are most likely to come up and you're going to be ready for them. Then we're going to see some common interview mistakes, things that people say that are not the right thing to say. I'm going to show you the rules and regulations that you need to know and be aware of and show knowledge to help you get the job. I'm going to show you what they want to hear and what they don't want to hear. So for a lot of these questions, I'm going to show you what a good answer looks like and the sort of things that you must not say. And if you say some of these things, you could end up completely blowing your interview. So I'm going to give you lots of tips of certain things that if they hear, they're going to make it very, very difficult for you to get the job. It's going to slash your score and it's going to be a real negative. So we're going to show you how to avoid all the things that could blow your interview. So there's some basic things, as I say, that could cause you to completely fail the interview. So these are the things you must never do. And that is firstly, not being prepared for the common questions, going into the interview and thinking that you can just make up answers on the spot. They ask a question, you think five, 10 seconds, you come up with a brilliant answer. That's not likely to happen. You've got to be prepared and that's why you need to watch this video. If you breach patient confidentiality, that is going to get you in hot water. So for example, using patient and coworker names. So if they ask you about, tell me about a time where you worked in a team with conflict and you start naming people, or they ask you about a situation with a patient and you give medical details about a patient and then name them in an interview, that is totally inappropriate and that could cost you the job. If you turn up in unprofessional dress, that could make you look not very serious. So you want to be dressing smart and professional for your interview. And then if you're not demonstrating the skills and the values that they are looking for, they want to be employing the people with the right values and people who've got the skills to do the job. And if you're not showing that in your interview, even if you have them, you're not showing them off, you're just not going to get the job. So let's look at the first question that comes up very, very, very often. And that is how would you deal with an aggressive or abusive patient? And there's lots of things they want to hear in this answer. So I'm going to show you all of the things you can talk about and you can plan a really great answer around these. So the way you always start it is by talking about preemption. So there's a lot of things that go on in hospitals and in care settings to do with violent patients where they are aware of someone's history, they're recording any instances of aggression. And so you're going to immediately be aware that that patient may be more difficult and there's going to be records of that and you're going to preempt it. And so if you have a patient that has a specific uh, mental condition or health condition that may result in them being more violent, aggressive or abusive, then you're going to be preempting that and you're going to know for that particular patient how is the correct way to deal with them, what are their triggers and how do you prevent this situation from happening. Then you say that you would avoid provocation. So you're not going to provoke them. You're not going to be shouting back at them, arguing back at them. So if a patient is being abusive towards you, you're not going to raise your voice and start shouting back at them and have a big argument and a fight with them. That's the wrong way to do it. It's very important that you don't provoke the patient. Then you're going to say you always remain calm because if you get angry and upset and really aggressive yourself, that is going to make the aggression even worse. If the patient who is aggressive and abusive feels that they are being threatened, then that's going to make the situation a lot worse. It's going to escalate the situation. Then you say you're going to assess the situation. You need to think what level is this at? Is this a patient that's a little bit annoyed and is just having a little bit of a rant to themselves, but isn't a real danger? Or is this a patient that is armed and extremely dangerous and likely to cause severe harm to someone or themselves? That's what you need to be assessing. Then you say that you would seek support if needed. You may use a panic button. If the patient presents a severe risk and is likely to cause severe injury, then it may be appropriate that the police need to be contacted and security to be able to deal with that situation and ensure that no one is hurt. Then you're going to say that you would make sure that you are de-escalating the situation. Definitely use the word de-escalate. It's about bringing the situation under control, calming everything down and removing the aggression from the situation as best you can. So that's going to involve not arguing with the patient. So if the patient is demanding something, you don't want to be saying, well, definitely not, absolutely not. You're not going to get that. You want to be using more neutral language like, yes, we can have a discussion about that. We'll need to have a look into that. 
rather than having shut down sort of phrases, you're going to be also talking quietly. You're going to show that you're listening to what the patient is saying. If they're making demands, you're going to be listening to those demands, whether or not you can actually action those. But that is part of the de-escalation. Then you're going to say you're going to move away from public view if that's possible and safe to do so. And then lastly, you talk about using your training and emphasize that safety is your number one priority. So you're going to follow your training that you've been given in dealing with abusive patients when you receive your training or you've had training in the past and definitely finish the answer by saying your number one priority throughout this encounter is to keep everyone safe and prevent harm. So basically, you just talk through all of these, so preemption, avoiding provoke, uh, provocation, staying calm, assessing the situation, getting support if you need it, de-escalate, move away, use your training, safety is the most important thing. So just basically talk around that sort of thing, and you will do really well in this question. Feel free to screenshot this or take any notes, take a picture of this page, and that's what you talk about in your interview. Let's look at the next question. Why do you want to be a healthcare assistant? It should, of course, not come as a surprise that this is going to be a question that is extremely likely to come up. And so it's really good to go to your interview with a few sentences written down that you've learned and that you've got prepared. Because if you can't give a strong, confident answer to this, it's going to make them question your motivation. So the first thing I would recommend you think about when you're planning out a good answer to this is why would you actually enjoy being a healthcare assistant? What is it about the job that is really enjoyable to you. And I'll give you lots of ideas of things that you can say. So you could talk about loving working with patients, making people feel better, helping people in their time of need. You've got to show that you're a very caring person, show an interest in medicine, learning more about care, working with a team is also something that you enjoy doing. You can talk about that. You want to match your skills, values, and experience. So if you've worked in care settings before, definitely make a point about that. Talk about your positive experiences and how you've enjoyed that. Talk about having a very caring nature and having good knowledge of care and providing good care and good quality care. And that's a match for your skills. Then you can think about development opportunities. So do you see joining this employer as a good move to you for your career? Do you think you could move on to a higher level? And in the future, take on extra responsibilities. And whatever you do, show lots of enthusiasm. Be really, really positive about why you really, really want to work as a healthcare assistant. Some other things you could say is if you see being a healthcare assistant as a long-term career, if you think being a healthcare assistant is the perfect job for you and something that you would really like doing over the long term, definitely mention that. If you're someone that cares a lot about helping others, that's a good thing to talk about. Mention that you have a very caring nature and that this job matches up with your caring nature. If you know someone that works for the company or organization or the NHS or wherever you're applying, talk about their experiences and why they have suggested that you should apply to this particular organization. You want to share in their enthusiasm. You don't want to name them, but you can say you've spoken to people who work here and they have all these good things to say. You could talk about the social importance. Healthcare assistants provide an absolutely essential service and make people's lives in these situations much, much better and provide really good quality care. And then you can talk about the positives of the employer. So why is it you want to join this particular organization? What do you like about them? And if you plan an answer around all of this, you will have a really beautiful and really strong answer ready to go. So feel free to pause it, screenshot this, and I would recommend you write out a simple list of you know four or five bullet points about things that you want to get in the answer based around this. Let's move on to the next one, which is what attributes make a great healthcare assistant. So they're going to ask you what you think you need to have and be like to be really good at the job. And I'll just give you lots of phrases that you could talk about and just pick a couple of these and talk about them. So caring, professional able to prioritize. There's going to be lots and lots of different things going on and you have to pick what is the most important thing to do because you can't do everything at once. So prioritizing is important. Being empathetic is very important. Of course, just being very patient. You're going to be dealing with perhaps sometimes challenging cases, challenging patients, and you're going to have to be very patient. You've got to be a team player. You are part of that patient's care and you're not the only person. There is lots of people around that patient that are providing care, and you're one member in that team. Then you can talk about 
being someone that follows procedures. Healthcare assistants are not the people that are going to be writing the policies across an entire hospital very often. They may have a little bit of a say in it, but the procedures that you follow are going to be directed. We've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of very high quality medical research, and we know the right way for things to be done. They can always improve, but you're there to follow the correct procedures. You're observant, you spot things, you notice when a patient is improving, when they're not improving, and you can feed into that. You're also going to be reasonably physically fit. I'm not talking about being an athlete, but you're going to have a level of fitness because you're going to be up and moving around a lot in your job. You're very calm under pressure. You're diplomatic and you're outcome focused. So basically, I would choose various ones on this list and then you can talk about these as the attributes. These are the things that are most important to be successful as a healthcare assistant. Let's move on to the next one. Tell me about a positive experience you've had with a patient and a less positive one. So a positive experience could be something like supporting a young patient when you've successfully de-escalated a situation that may have positive sides and negative sides. Don't pick a really awful, really violent uh, situation. Pick one where it was maybe a child that was very angry and upset and you were able to calm that situation down. If a doctor or a nurse has ever recognized you and said you've done a really good job, that's a good one to talk about. And then a really positive thing that you could have done is if you've ever made a suggestion or you've given some feedback and actually something changed, that you said, why don't we do it this way? What do you think about this? And someone more senior went, actually, that's a really good idea. It's been implemented and the patient's care improved. Then for a negative experience, Good examples are dealing with an abusive patient, make sure it was dealt with well. That could be a good example of a negative experience, but you focus on how you dealt with it. And then you could talk about without, of course, naming the patient or giving any specific identifiable details about them, a situation where a patient refused treatment. And you can talk about how that obviously harmed them and their welfare wasn't very good, but they have the right to re refuse treatment, that medicine can only be administered with consent, and that's a fundamental thing. If someone says that they don't want to have a particular treatment, it can't be forced on them. And so the patient maybe had a very poor experience and suffered a lot, but ultimately it was their decision. They made it of sound mind. It was a negative experience, and you hated seeing that, but ultimately that was the patient's decision and that's how it had to be. And so that's a really great example of a negative experience that could have happened. Another question that comes up very, very often, and particularly towards the beginning of the interview, is they say, tell me about yourself. And when it comes to the tell me about yourself question, you must not waste this opportunity. You have to answer it right. Otherwise, you're not going to impress them and show them that you're the right person for the job. So the way that you answer this is to start with experience, then talk about your personal qualities, and then talk about your interest in the role. And this is how you structure a great answer. So let's start with the experience. In the experience, you start with the most relevant experience and then work outwards to show off broader experience. So the best experience you could have is healthcare experience. So talk about all of the jobs that you've had in healthcare. Then think about caring experience more generally. Have you done any work that's involved caring? That could be, for example, childcare or caring for elderly people. Or even you could just mention, I wouldn't talk about it in great detail, but you could mention if you've cared for a family member as well, because that's some caring experience. Then if you've got customer service experience, that's the next most relevant experience where there's some overlaps with the healthcare assistant's job, working with the general public. So you could talk about that as well. And then make sure you talk about any qualifications you have, focusing most on the qualifications that are most relevant to your job. Then you need to think about your qualities. So personal qualities are important that you can mention. It's definitely say that you're compassionate. Say that you're a caring person, because that's important. Say that you're very professional and also say that you're highly organized. So that's the next thing you say is you give a list of your qualities and think back to the one 
slide that I had earlier where we talked about the qualities that are important for being a healthcare assistant, and you can talk about those as well. Then your interest in the role, you definitely should say that you love working with patients because that's very important, that you're really passionate about improving the quality of people's lives, that you want an active job, you don't want to be sitting down at an office desk all the time, you want to be up there moving around doing lots of active work. And then you could link to your personal interests. If you have an interest in medicine and healthcare, definitely say that you've got a strong interest in healthcare, for example, and that's a good link to your interests. So that's how you answer this question. Go through your experience, show how your experience is relevant to the job and the skills that you got from that experience. Then list all the qualities that are important and say that you've got them and then show that you're really, really interested in getting this job and it's a perfect job for you. And that's how you answer the tell me about yourself question. Now, the next question I want to look at is what is your biggest strength? And then, of course, we're going to go on to what is your biggest weakness? So to answer this, you want to focus on this arrow here. So you start with a genuine strength. It has to be a real strength that you actually have. And I'll give you some examples of strengths that you can say and examples that you can use to answer it. Then you want to provide either an actual example of you using this strength or some evidence that shows that you really do have this strength and you want to make it highly relevant. So you want to be thinking about the job that a healthcare assistant does, what do they need to be good at and say something related to that. So some ideas you could use is if you're really good at working in a team, talk about being good at teamwork, lots of empathy, say that you're very empathetic, you're good at prioritizing things or that you are really good at working under pressure. These could be some skills that you can talk about and you can back up as having those skills. I'll give you an example of a way to answer this. You could say, I have a strong track record of forming positive and trusting relationships with patients. That would be a great strength to talk about. And then for some evidence to actually back up that you have this strength, if you've seen the reference that you've got for this job from a previous manager and it says things that you're good at, you could pick one of those strengths and say, in my reference, you'll see that my former manager has commented on this. You could think about times where a patient has said to you, you're really good at this and has provided some positive feedback. And you can say a patient once told me that and basically say what the feedback was. If you've got some qualifications that show that you've got this particular skill, you could say that. Or if you were saying something like, using the example of working well under pressure, you can give an example of a time when you're under lots of pressure but worked really well. And so an example can be good evidence. The next one you have to worry about is what is your greatest weakness? And don't blow the interview in this question. Make sure you got a weakness ready that's a good weakness. And I'll give you some inspiration of things you can talk about. So to answer this, you start by giving a real weakness. There is no point giving a fake weakness. Then make sure you're doing something about it and then it is so important that this is not important to a healthcare assistant job. So if you say you're bad at something that's important, it's going to blow the interview. So if you were to say something like, I've always been such a perfectionist, that's a fake weakness. You won't be taken seriously. And on the other end of the scale, if you say I faint every time I see blood, well, maybe being a healthcare assistant is not for you. You have such a big problem in that sentence that you're probably going to be just ruled out. Then... We need to think about how you actually answer it. And I'll give you some ideas of some things you can say. So one of the weaknesses I'm aware of is say what the weakness is and then say to overcome this, I will and try and give an example or some idea that you could improve and get over this weakness. Some of them that you could use is public speaking. It's extremely unlikely as a healthcare assistant that you're going to be standing up in front of a room of 500 people and delivering a speech. You might do it, but it's not going to be something that they're looking for. It's not a skill that's essential for being a healthcare assistant. And if you can't give a speech to 500 people, you're not going to get the job. That's really not super important to this job. If you can only speak one language, that's not a good thing. And it would be great to speak more than one language. But depending on where you're applying, of course, if you're applying to somewhere where there's a high proportion of people that do speak a second language, don't choose that one. But if you're applying to somewhere where almost everyone only speaks English, then that as a weakness isn't going to harm you so much. And it's quite easy to talk about how you would like to learn another language. And then delegation is another one. As a healthcare assistant, you will experience people delegating to you much more often than you going up to the doctor and saying, right, can you do this? And then to the nurse, right, I want you to go and do this. That's not going to happen very much. So you're going to be the one delegated to, not the person doing the delegating. So that's a 
perfectly reasonable weakness. So choose one and then have a weakness ready that's not important to the job. Then we can think about describe a time when you have experienced conflict in a previous role. So they're thinking about a disagreement you've had with someone. And the key here is not to pick something where you were the bad one or where it wasn't managed very well. So the key to a successful answer is where you've behaved professionally, you've showed initiative, so you've spotted something that wasn't right and you've done the right thing. And then the most important thing is that even though there was conflict or a disagreement, the patient got good quality care and you were an important part of ensuring that this conflict didn't hurt another patient because that's absolutely unacceptable. Then bad answers involve unprofessional behavior, don't talk about how you are arguing about it or focus on the details of the disagreement or arguing or any unprofessional sort of things there. And then a negative patient outcome. Don't use an example where a patient actually was harmed because of conflict. So some good examples you could use is, for example, very early in your career when you're just starting out, which is probably nothing like what you are now, but you could have received really harsh negative feedback. You could have had a manager that's told you that you are really bad at something or you're awful or you've done it completely wrong. And then it's very easy to talk about how you listened to that feedback very carefully, you took it on board and that's never been a problem for you since and you fixed that. And it's focusing on the early career because that could have been 10 years ago and you were totally different 10 years ago and it's not relevant now, but it shows that you listen to feedback and you learn from it. You could have a situation where a colleague was not following the correct protocol. And so you had to step in and stop them and say, this isn't how it's done. It needs to be done this way, because that's an important thing to do. If someone is not following the correct protocol and is going to cause harm, maybe that colleague was very inexperienced. They hadn't received the right training and you had to stop them. That could be a good example, because you've done the right thing. And then any other examples of professionally managed disagreements where you had a disagreement, but then you dealt with it in a professional way. So now that you know the examples to use and you know what you should say and what you shouldn't say, we can now look at how you actually structure a really strong answer to this. So to do it, you always use what's called the STAR technique and STAR stands for situation, task, action, result. So every time you're given a question, like tell me about a time when you did this, follow the STAR technique. So in this case, you would start by saying, what is the conflict? That's a situation. Basically set the scene. Then you do the task. What did you actually need to do? So you've got this conflict. What was important? What was the thing that you needed to achieve? So you had to achieve, obviously, a good patient outcome. You need to solve this problem and remove this conflict. Then the action. How did you fix it? What did you do? that sorted this problem and then the result how did it lead to a positive outcome you must always choose examples where good things happened at the end it might be that things went wrong along the way but that they were fixed they were picked up on and that at the end there was a good patient outcome so anytime you're asked tell me about a time always go through the star technique and your answers will be so much stronger and your chance of being successful is going to increase. So let's now move on to another extremely common question, which is how would you deal with a patient constantly using the buzzer? And this is a problem that happens a lot in care settings, and you need to know how to deal with it. So there's the wrong things to say, and don't say any of these. So ignore it. So you've learned that the patient doesn't really need assistance, so you ignore it. Because of course, they might have seriously injured themselves, used the buzzer, and then it's been ignored. That would be very, very dangerous. You say that you would disable it, that's not acceptable. And basically in your interview, don't say that you would do anything that would lead to a negative patient outcome. If you are in an interview and you say you would do something that will hurt a patient, they will not get you the job, give you the job. That's the number one thing to avoid. Don't ever say that you would hurt a patient in your interview because you're not gonna get the job. Then let's look at the positives the right thing to say. So you would be clear that you always would respond to buzzers, that they can't be ignored. Then you would say that you would focus on communication. You would be speaking to the members of their care team. You would make other people involved in their care aware that this is an issue, that they are using the buzzer inappropriately. And then you'd be working with that team to try and resolve the issue. You're going to consider their vulnerabilities. You're going to be saying in the interview that you're aware that these people may be very, very scared. 
they may not fully understand why this is causing such a problem. And there may be other vulnerabilities or issues that that patient is facing that is leading to them to really overuse the buzzer. And then you're going to be saying that you would be targeting appropriate use, that you want the patient to be using it in the case where it is genuinely needed and that you're going to achieve that by working with their care team to solve this problem. So you're always focusing on solutions and not saying anything that would cause a negative patient outcome. So let's now move on to another question that is quite common. So a relative calls asking about test results. So a patient in the hospital, let's say there's someone who is over 18, has received some test results and someone in their family is calling to find out about those. And then the question is, what would you do? So you need to show that you know the right things. Then you're going to reassure them that you're not going to do the wrong things. And then you're going to answer the question. So just saying I wouldn't tell them is not a very good answer. You want to be showing that you know way more than that. So the first thing you're going to say is that you're going to follow the confidentiality policy. So the place that you're applying to will have a policy that says who can know what and when and how and what the correct procedures are for disclosing test results. So you need to first start by saying you follow the confidentiality policy. Then you've got to know medical ethics. Basically, relatives are not automatically entitled to know everything. So for example, if you have someone that's just had an HIV test, their uncle is not entitled to just call up and ask whether they have it or not. That is not something that should ever be shared. That is very private. And so there is medical ethics to consider. It's very important in medicine that patients trust that their data is confidential. Otherwise, they would hide things and cause themselves harm. And then you have to know your legal obligations. It's not legal to be telling everyone about private medical conditions. You'd be horrified if your doctor's office told people your test results without your permission. You would be very, very, very upset. Then you're going to reassure them. You're going to say that you would always protect confidentiality and that only authorized personnel should uh, be giving out test results and they should only be given to the appropriate person with full consent. And then you're also saying that the appropriate person to give test results may not be you. As a healthcare assistant, you are not going to be delivering a cancer diagnosis. You are not going to be starting a discussion about end of life care. That is not your job. So you have to be clear on the fact that as a healthcare assistant, you are going to be very limited in the information that you are able to discuss. Quite often, serious diagnoses and serious test results will have to come from a doctor or an appropriate person. And then so to answer this, in almost all cases, you would have to refuse this request. There are very small circumstances in which you would not refuse this request, but you would have to have explicit authorization. So under the appropriate policies, you would have to be allowed to say this. So for example, the patient may have said and clearly communicated that they are happy for this to be diagnosed, disclosed to family members. They may be totally incapacitated and you have explicit permission that they can receive this information or there may be different ways to handle it if it's come back as normal or if it's come back as abnormal. There can be different rules there. But the most important thing is you can't disclose anything that you're not authorized to to someone who is not authorized to receive that information. And that it's very important that whenever anything is disclosed to a family member, that there is a consent for that disclosure. And so basically, Start by talking about all the things that you know, the medical ethics, the legal obligations, the confidentiality policy. Reassure them that you're not going to do the wrong thing and you're very well aware of the fact as a healthcare assistant that you're limited in the sort of things that you can say. And then you answer it by being clear that in virtually every single case, unless there is a special circumstance where you have explicit authorization to do so, you would refuse this request. So let's move on to some quick fire questions, some simple quick questions 
that you could be asked that have nice, easy answers and make sure you get the right answer. So the first question is, what would you do if you saw broken glass on the ward? This shouldn't be a difficult question, but people do answer it wrong. They say that they would go and get someone from the cleaning team to deal with that, or they would call for someone to come and collect it. That's not the right way to do it. And you're basically walking away from a hazard and letting someone hurt themselves. So what you do to answer this is you first say that safety is extremely important and you have identified a danger on the ward and you need to take ownership and take charge of making sure that danger is removed. Then you talk about urgency, that that broken glass could cause an injury to someone so it can't stay there and it can't be not dealt with immediately. So you might be getting someone else who is passing by and ask them, could they stand with this while you go and collect the appropriate equipment to remove it so that they can make sure nobody stands on it and that that area is maintained safe during the cleaning process. And the most important thing is you say that you would sort it out, that that's gonna be immediately removed and that danger is going to be taken away. That's the key thing that you have to say. So it's all about fixing the problem and showing that it's an urgent problem to be fixed and not something that can be ignored or made someone else's problem. Because if you made a call to the cleaning staff and they said, yeah, we'll be along in five minutes and then they forgot, that glass could be on the ground for half an hour and someone could stand in it and end up really hurting themselves. And that's just unacceptable. So it's all about fix the problem quickly. The next one they may ask is what is palliative care? And you need to know what it is. It's very simple. So you start by saying it's end of life care. And the goal of it is to reduce pain, it's to help the person to die with dignity, and it is to improve the quality of life that they have remaining. So basically talk about these four ideas, and that just simply shows that you know what palliative care is. You can go into more detail if they want more detail, but you need to ensure that you know at least the very basics. Then we've got another one. A patient asks a technical medical question about their treatment, what would you do? And it's important not to give the wrong answer and to focus on the right answer. So the wrong answer would be to basically answer it. The right answer is to listen politely, understand what their question is, because you may be passing this question on to someone else or saying that they've raised the question about this. You have to know what they're actually wanting to know. And then you're going to refer that question to the appropriate expert. And as I say, the wrong way to answer it is to say that you're gonna ignore it. Just basically, they've asked the question, well, you're not the right person to ask, why have they asked me, I'm not a doctor, and you just ignore it. You partly answer it, so you give them part of the answer, and you may actually be giving them the wrong guidance, and you may be suggesting that they do something that's inappropriate or dangerous, even unknowingly, and then attempting to answer it is also the wrong thing to do. You're not the correct person to be answering technical questions. So for example, if someone is reporting a side effect, you don't want to be saying, oh, it's fine, don't worry about it. Um, or saying, yes, this tends to happen with this particular medicine or trying to put on that you're some expert, which is not appropriate. So make sure you talk about doing the right things and not doing the wrong things, trying to answer really highly technical medical questions and provide medical advice, which is not appropriate. So let's move on to another one that they sometimes ask, what are the six C's of nursing? Very easy, just memorize them. So it's care, compassion, competence, communication, courage, commitment. Those are the six C's. And my advice, if you want to help on memorizing them, is to Google or put into YouTube the Care Maker song where they sing these and it really helps get them into your head. So do memorize those just in case they ask. Very easy to remember. Then we've got, can you work antisocial hours? And the fact that they're answering this question tells you what answer they want. You're going to have to say yes. If you're wanting to be a healthcare assistant, but you only want to work during the day and you'll never work any night shifts and you'll never work early in the morning and you will never work late at night, that's going to be a big problem. And why are they going to hire you? Because realistically, they've asked this because they're interested in some antisocial working. And so you can't say no to this. And then to make your answer even stronger, you can give examples of times when you've worked antisocial hours and experience in previous roles where this has been part of your working pattern to show that you're going to be someone who's able to do this. And that's how you answer this. Then before we finish, here are some good questions that you could ask at the end of your interview. You could say, I am eager to improve my skills and develop. 
what training and progression is available to healthcare assistants here. You could say, can you tell me more about the team that I could potentially be working with here? If successful, you might want to ask them, can you tell me more about the induction process for new healthcare assistants here? You could say, what would you advise a new hire to do prior to starting to ensure they are well prepared to join the team as a healthcare assistant? And you can make commitments to do the things that they suggest. And then lastly, you might want to invent one based on some questions that you have based on what they're saying throughout the interview and double check that's appropriate. And then you can ask that. Don't ask about pay and don't ask about time off or going on holiday during your interview or delaying your start date. These are all very negative things to say and could harm your chance of getting the job. So I hope this was helpful. Please post in the comments below questions that you were asked in your healthcare assistant interview. I'd appreciate if you'd like and subscribe. And finally, thank you very much for watching.